Well, hello everybody. This is Tom, November Zero, Zulu Echo Tango. Uh, I got a lot of requests from folks uh, about repeaters. Uh, and this is going to be a very basic, uh, some different things that I've used, uh, tried out, uh, but very basic. I'm not going to get into a lot of technical data uh, because this is this is designed for beginners. What do they need for a repeater uh, for GMRS? Uh, and some of the stuff here actually you can get them for set up for amateur radio too. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, one thing here is the uh, Wuxaner Ocean, however you pronounce it. Uh, this is a mobile radio, 50 watts output, and you can get two of these, and they've, they've got a wiring kit um, to wire it up, and turns it into a repeater. Not too bad, very very basic, very simple. Uh, you do have to have 12 volts, so you'll need a power supply or some way to power them, <clears throat> uh, to power both of them, actually. Uh, and I want to say these are around, gosh, 250 a piece. Uh, so you're into it about 500. Uh, then you've got to get the wiring kit to uh, connect them both together. Uh, and, and I'm not going to quote exact prices on this. Uh, because they change every day. Uh, and, and, and this is a good, I, I've seen people that have used uh, these mobiles uh, for a repeater, and, and they work quite well. Uh, the next one, uh, which I consider on the, on the extreme budget end uh, for a GMRS repeater, is this uh, Retrievus uh, RT97. Uh, it, it comes in this small box. It's got everything you need in here, uh, including a duplexer, which this one here, add on about another $300 to get a duplexer. This one does, it, it's built in. It's, it's inside the box here. This is waterproof, dustproof, uh, actually pretty darn durable. I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, and this thing runs uh, 12 to 24 volts, uh, free shipping when you order it right from uh, Retrievus. Uh, you can look them up on, online. Uh, I'll try and get a link in here. Uh, and so this one I said the uh, Wooks Honor Ocean is 50 watts output approximately. And you do lose some when you go through the duplexer. Uh, so you, you may only be putting out 40 watts. Uh, depending on your antenna and coax, it could drop it down to 30 boy, 35 watts, but it's still pretty good. Uh, now, the Retrievus, this, this little deal here, uh, this only puts out 5 watts. Uh, not a lot of power. Uh, if you've got the antenna up very high, uh, as high as you can get it, uh, it, it works much better. Now, what are these for? You can, yeah, you can, you can set it up at your home. I, and I think what these are mainly designed for, this one here, is uh, if you're out camping, you're with family, uh, up at your hunting land, something that's quick, easy to put up. Uh, so let's see. And this one will run off of uh, 12 to 24 volts, which is, it's got a wide range, which is very good. Uh, like I said, only 5 watts out. But if you get an antenna up, up in the air, pretty good. Uh, it, it works pretty good. Now, I did check this morning as of, this morning, uh, it's three hundred and thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents, uh, which isn't bad, and that includes free shipping right from the company. Uh, next, we're going to move on to my my favorite here. I'll move this over here, which is the Bridgecom. Uh, they're made uh, here in the U.S. Uh, and very, very rock solid repeater. <clears throat> uh, what I like about this one is it takes 110 volts to power it. On the back of the repeater, it also has a 12 volt, 12 volt hookup. So you can take a lithium iron phosphate, uh, lead acid battery, whatever you've got. <clears throat> hook it into the back of this thing, 
So if you lose power from the grid, it will switch over to the 12 volt battery, which is actually really, really nice. And uh, this thing is 40 watts output, which is if you get the antenna in a good location, you get it up high enough. And depending on the type of antenna you're using and the, and the coax, uh, like I talked in my uh, last video, coax is key uh, to get some to get some decent stuff, especially for your repeaters. Uh, but as of this morning, of uh, time of filming of this video, uh, it's a little more expensive for these. So hang on, here we go. $1,999.99. Now, people say, oh my gosh, that's expensive. Well, here's what's, what's nice about this. If you can afford this one, you call Bridgecom up. You can talk to one of their technicians when you order this. You tell them the frequency you want to use for your GMRS. They will program this up for you. They actually build them when you order them. So they will put the frequencies you want in there. They'll put the tones in, in there that you want for your repeater. And they will also program the ID function that's built into this one. And you know the FCC, you know, uh, if you go by there, what they say, you have to ID every so often on your repeater so people know wh what repeater is. it is. It's in, it's in uh, Morse code. So unless they're a code expert, uh, they're, they're not going to have a clue. But you're meeting the requirements of the FCC, which is nice. So you're, you're covered there all the way around. Uh, and like I said, it does come with the duplexer uh, when you order it. Uh, and they, they tune that duplexer for what, your, what frequency or what GMRS channel you're going to be on, which is really nice because duplexers can be pretty tricky uh, to tune. Uh, you just about need, well, you really do need a, a service monitor to, to set it all up right and, and to tune it. And this is the duplexer here uh, that I got for another project I'm working on. You know, so you've got your, your antenna, you've got your transmit and receive, uh, and then they, what they do is they adjust these back here for the frequency you're on. Uh, you can't just plug in an antenna and have it work. It needs that separation, and, and so it's either you put two antennas up, and they've got to be separated, and there's a formula to figure all that out. But you're better off just getting a duplexer. Uh, it's, it's really a nice thing to have. Uh, it, it makes it much easier, uh, much less stuff you have to deal with, like putting up two antennas, making sure you got the separation right so you don't get bleed over. Uh, when it's transmitting back into your receive, uh, it's it's really the way to go. <clears throat> now, like I said, you can you can order this with the duplexer already set up. They go through everything and tune it for the uh, Bridgecom repeater. Uh, you can if if you know what you're doing, you've got all the equipment to set it all up, or and you've and you let's say you've got a duplexer laying around, uh, you can get this unit for as of today. Uh, $15.99, $1,599 without minus, minus the duplexer. So that's, that's not too bad. Uh, but there are a lot of options, like I said. You get what you pay for. I do like the uh, being able to put a 12-volt supply on the back. Uh, so that way, if you lose grid power, you've got this. Uh, and I do like this little Retrievus. Uh, it works great uh, when, like I said, you're setting up a at a campground, you're out hunting. They, they really work nice uh, for, for what they are and what you pay for them. And, and everything's in here, including the duplexer. A very, very, very small package. Would I want to leave this thing on for months at a time? Probably not. This is where this guy here comes in, the bridge come. Uh, as far as the... Uh, 
looks on using two mobiles and the uh, wiring kit that connects them both together. You also need a duplexer, you know, so, so this can get quite, ex by the time you get done buying all the parts and pieces, you're just about up to this price here, you know, uh, not quite up to it, but a lot of headaches setting this up versus cry once and you're done, you know, plug it in, hook up your antenna, you're, you're ready to go. Kind of, kind of like this, this deal here. And like I said, if you're just setting up a temporary location, these things work actually quite well. The only thing with uh, the retrievers here, this one, it does not have a ID function. So it does not put out your call sign, uh, your GMRS call sign or amateur radio call sign, you know, every so many minutes. <clears throat> uh, so that's something you have to do. Uh, but they do, I think they're on eBay. They, they do have little cards you can buy and and hook up to this where it'll actually ID for you if you were gonna use it for a, a extended period of time. So anyways, very basic, very simple. Uh, it, it's, they're, they're all good units, they really are. You know, uh, this is my favorite. Uh, this would be have to be my number two and then the mobiles, number three. But one last thing, when you're setting up a base station, especially one in your home uh, or at your workplace, wherever it may be, uh, it is grounding. I'm not going to get into a bunch of grounding because there are a lot of different theories about it. There are a lot of, everybody's got their own opinion on it. Uh, but what I do here for, for all my gear, when my coax comes down outside from the antennas, uh, I've got a, I've got a big waterproof box that the coax cable goes into. And then I've got these, uh, polymer or polyphaser, uh, deals inside the box where the, uh, let's see here, the antenna comes in and then this goes from here down into my radio room. And, and then I've got a big grounding plate in back where these bolt to. And what this is, is for lightning protection. So if your antenna were to get hit by lightning, there's a glass tube in here that would shatter, pop <clears throat> and direct the lightning to ground. Is this 100%? No, I've seen lightning do some pretty crazy things. Uh, but it's for the for the cost of these, I want, I want to say they're 50, 60 bucks. You can find them online for lightning, on, you know, just look for lightning protection. And it's, it's a nice bit of insurance. So it, it, it does help, especially when you're going to leave something on all the time. You, you don't want to unplug the coax, you know, if there's a storm coming, well, you you should, but uh, if you're not there and able to do it, this this will just help you there. Uh, and if you want more on grounding, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, that, that would be a very long video talking about different things, grounding, bonding, how you should do it properly. But if you look at the ARRL website for amateur radio, They've got some great information, uh, great resources. They, they've got some little books you can get on how to ground your radio stations. Uh, great wealth of information. Uh, and if you've noticed, I've got my buddy Fred here. He's uh, He's been helping out with the videos. He doesn't say much. But uh, at that, have a wonderful, blessed day. And uh, radio on.